for um, professor of chemistry at the University of Grenoble uh, until uh, 2004, now head of laboratory of physics and chemistry of polymers, um, uh, University of Pau, France, since 2004. His research interests deal with chemical modification of polysaccharides, structural properties relations, study of their functional properties and applications, food, cosmetics, environmental, biomedical. He has co authored the 108 publication and uh, has author of 10 patents. Please. Presentation title is Amphiphilic Polysaccharides and Stabilization of Concentrated Oil in Water Emulsions. Thank you for your present, for the presentation. And first, I would like to thank Professor Emmanuel and Elizabeth Arvan, Mucci, and Paolo Ferruti for your kind invitation. And I, want, um, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you as well as your team for the perfect organization of this conference. I am going to present some results which are the results of a strong cooperation with Professor Alain Durand in the University of Lorraine in Nancy. First, I am going, after a quick introduction, I am going to speak and to describe the different uh, polymeric surfactants, in particularly the dextrin-based amphiphilic systems and the proper chemical, physical chemical properties of the absorbed layers we may obtain with such polymeric surfactants. Then, I am going to show you how it's possible to stabilize concentrated oil in water emulsions using such polymeric surfactants before some conclusions and prospects. First, in the last years, we have uh, an increasing tendency to substitute molecular surfactants by other stabilizers, such as uh, synthetic polymeric surfactants or amphiphilic derivatives of polysaccharides to formulate suspension of nanoparticles or emulsions. Such polymeric stabilizers possess different advantages compared to molecular surfactants such as a strong absorption, uh, 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 strong absorption at the interface and also the ability to form thick and viscoelastic absorb, absorb layers which are able to be some barriers against the, co the coalescence. Finally, we have uh, prepared some dextrin-based amphiphilic systems, and we have shown that they, they are able to exhibit surface active properties, and also to be efficient oil-in-water emission stabilizers, at least for um, dispersed volume fraction up to 50%. Our objectives were first to compare the effect of such polysaccharide-based surfactants compared with commercial polymeric ones on the characteristics, in, uh, physical chemical characteristics of this interface, then to correlate the observed difference to the uh, structure of these uh, uh, polymeric surfactants and the properties of oil water interface and then to know if it was possible to increase the concentration of such emulsions to be able to be stabilized with such polymeric surfactant. Amphiphilic polymers we are going to discuss are polymers with hydrophilic and hydrophobic sequences. They may be either within the macromolecular backbone as it we have in synthetic core polymers or for derivatives of polysaccharides we have an hydrophilic backbone on which it's possible to graft some hydrophobic groups. The presence of these hydrophobic groups 
allow to have hydrophobic interactions between such groups, and these hydrophobic interactions are at the origin of specific rheological properties. By adjusting the structure, and it's possible, sorry, It's possible to adjust the balance, the hydrophil hydrophobic balance, and as a consequence, to tune the interfacial as well as the rheological property. First, we are going to discuss the different polymeric surfactants we have used and comparing them for the uh, physical chemical properties of the adsorb layers. The Dutch one is a non-ionic bacterial polysaccharide with alpha glucose units within the macromolecular backbone. With, and these glucose units are linked with one six glycosidic binds. And we may have also some supplementary one three, one two, and one four lateral bonds. In our, in our sample, we have only one three lateral bonds, and these lateral bonds represent at maximum 5% of the glycosidic units. That, that lead to have more or less a rhino polymer with very few lateral grafts. The hydroxyl groups are reactive enough to be able to be used for grafting chains via the formation of ether or ester bonds. We have prepared in this uh, uh, study the um, phenoxy, dextra phenoxy substituted dextrans by reacting the dextran with one, two, epoxide, three phenoxy propane, propane in one in uh, uh, sodium, sodium sodium hydroxide solutions. We have hydrophobic groups on the hydrophilic macromolecular backbone and the degree of hydrophobic substitution was determined using UV spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy. And the different polymers we use in this study have some hydrophobic substitution between 10 and 20 percent. It is well known that the best um, efficiency in stabilizing oil in water emulsion was obtained with ABA copolymer or ABN graph copolymer. We have compared our dextran derivative systems with pruronics, which are ABA uh, copolymer with two poly A blocks of ethylene oxide and one B uh, block of uh, propylene oxide. We have different lengths of the hydrophobic groups with different lengths of hydrophilic groups and molecular weight. And we have also considered to be able to compare with usual surfactants with a low molecular weight surfactant, which is well known, which is a twin AT, which is polyoxyethylene sorbitan monooleate with a C17 hydrophobic tail. We have represented the different structure on this figure and we are going to come back on that measured using a drop tensiometer. The surface tension was measured from, analyse, from analyzing the axial symmetric shape of the drop or in this case, in our case, a droplet. And it's possible in this case to follow the evolution of the surface tension with time. And moreover, it's possible to have rheological 
uh, data on the absorb layer. It's possible to determine the two-dimension complex heological modulus by considering the evolution of the, of the surface tension we have here in response in, uh, uh, in, in response to a sinusoidal variation of the surface area. And we have two moduli. Th this one which is called the storage or elastic modulus, and this one which is the loss or the viscous modulus. For our different systems, we are able to follow the kinetics and to determine at the end, when we have the equilibrium, the, equi the, uh, the surface tension at equilibrium and the different values of the logical models. And we, we can observe that for s some of the, these polymers, it is necessary to wait for uh, several hours to be able to be at equilibrium. From this kinetics and the variation of uh, uh, the surface area, it's possible to classify the different uh, polymeric uh, surfactants in, in fact three groups. The first one with L64 and P105 with a low interface tension, a quick kinetics, but without, oh, excuse me, without providing, without providing any uh, vis any elastic uh, characteristics of the adsorb layer. These two polymers, this one and this one, are three have three block structures with the largest weight fraction of hydrophobic groups. That's the reason why we have a low interfacial tension. The low molecular weight of such polymers led to a quick, uh, a, a fast kinetics, but the limiting number of the hydrophilic groups led to a very small visco, uh, a small elasticity of the absorb layer. A second group is is con uh, consists with the dextran derivatives and this F68 pluronic, with in this case a large elasticity, but a small, kinet uh, a small kinetics and a large surface tension. These polymers, which are these three ones, have in this case um, a weight uh, a weight fraction of hydrophobic groups between uh, 18 and 30 compared with the other ones for which we have between 50 and 60. And we have also a high, a large uh, hydrophilic uh, sequence and a large molecular weight. These characteristics, but the fact we have large uh, hydrophilic group allow to have this uh, viscoelastic properties for the adsorb layers. And this is attributed to the effect of entanglements within the, uh, the adsorb layer. To go um, to in order to get further insight concerning about the self-organization of these polymeric surfactants within the adsorb layer, we have performed some uh, supplementary rheological experiments by modifying the, uh, the frequency of the variation of the, surf, uh, the uh, interface area. By modifying the, this interface area, the interfacial coverage will set out of equilibrium. And 
we have some different processes to be able to restore this equilibrium value. And uh, there are some theoretical models to study and uh, uh, associated to this process. And uh, we have considered two uh, external uh, situations. The first is the Lucassen van der Pen model, which is called LVDT, in which the kinetic limitation to come back to uh, the, uh, the equilibrium was due to the diffusion of the uh, surface active species, either the, uh, the hydrophobic sequence in copolymer or the hydrophobic groups within the polysaccharide derivatives. And in this case, we have such uh, equations between the, mod the uh, radical moduli and, in fact, we have a characteristic frequency which is related with the time of, uh, with the diffusion, with the time of diffusion and the coefficient, the diffusion coefficient of this surface active species. The second model we have considered is the Maxwell model, in which the kinetic limitation is due to an absorption barrier, which is related to a first order kinetics. In this case, we have also, we have different equations in which we have also a characteristic frequency which is related to the rate constant of the first order relaxation process. If we consider the destran derivatives, when we plot the logical moduli as a function of the frequency, that means the rate at which we are going to modify the interface uh, uh, area, we observe that we have a very good fit of experimental values with the equations. That means we have a diffusion control relaxation, which is at the origin of uh, the restoring of the equilibrium. And it's possible to measure the different values of the rheological modeling and the characteristic frequency. We observe that concerning the rheological modeling, we have an increase up to an hydrophobic content around 14% and then decrease. And we have already observed such results with derivatives of polysaccharides with alkyl chain, such as already dextran, but also chitosan, and it is related with the, dis with the comparison with the dis between the distance between the hydrophobic groups and the persistence length of the polymer. The frequency, the characteristic frequency, increases with the hydrophobic content. And the value is increasing from around 10 power minus 3 up to 10 power minus 2 radians per second. And this increase is attributed to the fact that when we increase the hydrophobic content, the local concentration of hydrophobic groups increases and the time for diffusion is decreased. And as the, character, the frequency is a reciprocal of time, it's normal that we have in this case an increase in the characteristic frequency. We have more or less the same thing for other three block sequences, but for the F127, for which we have not observed any fit of the experimental data, either with the LVDT or the Maxwell model. It is necessary to combine both models to have a reasonable fit. And 
This is due to the specific uh, structure that means for the F17 compared with the other three block uh, core polymers, we have a large uh, sequence which is much more larger than the, than the hydrophobic sequence we have within the other three block core polymers. Now, we may ask, is it possible to increase the oil in water concentration in our emissions to be stabilized? First, what are the concentrated oil in water emissions? In fact, we, it is not we, but they are defined when we have a dispersed face volume fraction which is larger than 74%. What is the meaning of this 74%? This 74% is the most compact arrangement of the monodispersed hard spheres for a face centered cubic packing. And in this case, we do not observe hard spheres or spheres for droplets, but they are distorted. We have prepared such emulsions with dodecan or paraffin oil as the uh, oil face. The aqueous face was either water or brine with 2% of sodium chloride, and we have used as a dextran derivative concentration between 0.2 and 1%, and it is the same, these are the same concentrations for other polymeric surfactants. How, they are, how these emissions are prepared? First, we prepare a polymer aqueous solution, and we let this polymer solution at equi let to equilibrium during 20 four hours to be able to have the thermodynamic equilibrium. And then we put the turbine at the free surface of the polymer solution. And we had the dispersed phase at a constant flow rate using a post-static pump with under agitation. And when we have finished the addition of the oil phase, we keep the emulsion under agitation, under steering, by increasing the, uh, the steering rate to be able to have the stabilization of such emulsions. As a consequence, we have such, uh, uh, not we have droplets, but in this case, I am being, I'm previously told, these are not sphere, but distorted spheres. First, is it possible to uh, emulsify such concentrated emulsions? And we have considered as a, a parameter to tell, yes, it's possible to emulsify, to have a monomodal distribution of the, drop, of the droplet size. And if we consider such concentration, we observe that by increasing the dodecan uh, fraction up to 95%, we keep a minimal size distribution of the droplet. That means it's possible to uh, emulsify this, uh, this oil in water concentrated uh, emulsions. And the droplet size decreases upon increasing the decan uh, fraction content as it was already observed. Now, what is the minimal concentration to be able to emulsify such emulsion? In fact, when we have dextran derivatives, and uh, we have used concentration 2.41%, we observe that, that at 0.2%, we have no monomodal distribution. 
And it is the reason why we tell that it is necessary to have at minimal, a minimal concentration of 0.4% of such polymeric surfactant to have a complete emulsification. When we compare water and sodium, sodium chloride solution as the aqueous phase, we do not observe any modification. That means with such polymeric surfactants, it's possible to emulsify emulsions prepared either with water or brines. And then we observe a, a reduction of droplet diameter when we increase the polymer concentration. And uh, this observation is uh, uh, the information that in fact the emulsion viscosity controls the droplet size distribution. And when we plot the uh, droplet size as a function of the volume fraction, whatever the polymeric surfactant, we have a decrease of this average droplet size, and uh, we are going to see that the emulsion uh, viscosity will be effectively uh, one of the reasons of this decrease. And uh, when we compare at the same volume fraction, we observe that the smallest size of the droplet is related with the lowest value of the interfacial tension. And we come back to the different groups we have already uh, 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 classified for the different uh, properties of the adsorb layers. Now we have also studied, as it seems that the, uh, the viscosity of the emulsion was one of the uh, parameters which influenced the stability of these emulsions. We have studied the rheological properties of this uh, interface. And in this case, we have measured the different storage and uh, loss moduli, as uh, we have uh, uh, defined previously, as a function of the angular frequency. And in this case, what we observe? First, the storage of the, vi the visco, uh, the, uh, the elastic modulus, in any case larger than the viscous one, and we have a very low dependence of the, the, uh, the, 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 the elastic modulus as a function of the frequency. It is a, t uh, a behavior which is typical of a gel-like behavior. And when we consider the different, uh, uh, the, the comparison of the storage modulus as a function of the volume fraction for the different uh, polymeric surfactants, this value is related with the interactions between the droplets and the strength of the emulsion and as a consequence the capacity of the being uh, of the stability of, uh, of stabilizing this emulsion. And uh, as previously we obs we observe exactly the same classification we have previously. The two systems with low interfacial properties, but no viscoelastic uh, uh, strong properties for the adsorb layer. And the dextran derivatives with F68 pluronic, which have the better, the largest value for the logical modeling, the elastic modulus, and as a consequence, the, uh, the better strength of the emulsion. And here I have put again the different class, and uh, uh, we, we observe that uh, the twin, due to the small uh, molecular weight, is a little bit different than the other one. Finally, when we want to uh, prepare some uh, uh, such emissions, 
it is necessary to test first the reproducibility and the storage stability. And in this case, I give you only the results with a dedicated fraction of 90%. A dextrone derivative concentration of 0.4, and here we have presented the result for our first series up to 50 days, more or less, and the second one up to more than one and a half year. And we observe that we keep exactly the same size distribution. That means it's possible to prepare and to stabilize such concentrated emissions up to a very long time. And uh, we have here put the mean drop dia blood diameter, and we observe that for the extra uh, derivatives, we keep exactly the same value for practically two and a half years. But for the twin, we observe that the emulsion is, is destroyed after more or less destabilized after 30 uh, days. And with the L64, which was one of the specific um, polymeric surfactant, after three days, the emulsion was destabilized. As a conclusion, we are able to uh, stabilize high concentrated oil water emulsions with hydrophobically modified dextran. We are able to uh, show, to demonstrate the, uh, the, um, uh, the absorb layers have process very interesting viscoelastic behavior during dilational rheology experiments, and it is one of the reasons why we have explained the ability to stabilize such concentrated emulsion. And uh, we have evidence some of some correlations between the interface properties and the emulsion macroscopic behavior. But now we have to continue the work by by trying to, com to compare the experimental results to theoretical calculation of the rheological behavior of these different emulsions to, more, to go more deeper in the uh, investigations about the links of rheological behavior with interface properties and the structure of these uh, uh, derivatives. And also now we have to try to enlarge the type of polysaccharide base amphiphilic systems. We have already worked with dextran, but also chitosan and as a one uh, polysaccharides, but we have to, to, to study if we are able to stabilize such concentrated emissions with this uh, polysaccharide derivatives. And uh, that opens some interest in the valorization of the biomass and not environmental friendly uh, materials for such applications to replace molecular surfactants or to replace synthetic polymeric surfactants. Thank you for your attention and grazie. Thank you for a very nice presentation. Are there questions from the audience? Uh, okay, I have one question. Um, regarding the um, solutions of dodecane in water, uh, you showed there is a decrease of uh, particle concentration with dodecane, uh, uh, the decrease of particle size with con dodecane concentration. But I saw two different, uh, um, there seemed to be uh, a sharp decrease in particle size with the uh, concentration of dodecane between, as far as I remember, it was 85 and 90 percent. So there were two, like a bimodal trend with concentration of dodecane, as far as I remember, according to the slide you showed.
Yeah. No, before, before. Yep, this one. Yeah, I see a drastic decrease. Also, if you look at the table, there seems to be a drastic decrease. Uh, as I said, one <laughs> more or less uh, small decrease with concentration with uh, up to 85 and then a drop. Yes, uh, but is there it is one of the questions we have now. <laughs> it, but we, we expect that it may be due to the change in the viscoelasticity of the adsorb layers. But it is the reason why we have to work mm -hmm. on the, um, to, to know what is the influence of the rheological properties of the adsorb layer, because we know that it is due to this viscoelasticity that we have barriers against coalescence and as a destabilization process of emissions. But how can we relate this, the size, the stability with the rheological properties of the adsorb layers? Now we, we, are, we work on this subject, but very honestly, we have no, no explanation at that time. Okay. okay. Right. So let's. Ah. Yes, okay. <coughs> Well, you know, very beautiful presentation, but I have a curiosity. These uh, systems are compatible with other types uh, of emulsifiers, uh, for instance, fatty acid, uh, salt, uh, or something like that. <coughs> yeah, I, I think it is compatible due to the fact, for example, we have observed that with some brands, with uh, salt, sol uh, aqueous solutions, we keep the, uh, the, the, the stabilization of such emulsions. But I suppose that's so because uh, there is no ionic, uh, uh, it's not ionic, this. <laughs> yeah, that you, you are completely right. That's the reason why okay. now we work with uh, uh, ionic polysaccharides such as phoskytosin, but also with other uh, algin alginate or something like that to to be able to know if we can uh, uh, enlarge the use of such derivatives. Because we know that effectively when we have some ionic surfactants, we have an influence of the salt concentration. But now we, we have no answer for this. Okay, thank you so much. If there are no more questions, we let me thank again our speaker, Professor um, Desbrier. And, and now uh, we present the next speaker, coming also from France, Professor Stéphane Bruzzo. He received his PhD from the University of Bordeaux and is now full professor of the University of uh, South Brittany in uh, uh, Lorient in France. His research interests in development of bio-based and uh, biodegradable uh, polymers from their production to their end of life. Uh, 